This is the SAU Report, a program featuring interviews with the faculty, staff, students, and alumni of Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia. Hi, and welcome to this edition of the SAU Report. My name is Joanna Eaton. And I'm Misty Holly. Today we're having a media roundtable and we'll be discussing news coverage with SAU broadcast students. This is Tammy Iverson and DeCarlo Collins. I'd like to welcome you all here today. Thanks. And we'd like to go ahead and get started. <clears throat> As a young adult, Tammy, how much time do you actually spend listening to the news or watching it? Actually, not that much. I mean, the only time that I normally watch the bulk of my news is like when I'm getting ready in the morning, like putting on my makeup, or if it's a really particularly interesting story, then I watch like the 6 o'clock or the 10 o'clock news. How about you, DeCarlo? I really have time um, being busy as I am <clears throat> with working and then coming to school and trying to study. You don't really get a chance to watch it, but normally when I'm at home, I try to get as much information as I can from what happens in today. But most of the time, I try to get it off the radio, and it's really good to have something like that. Do you find it a more convenient way to listen to news when you're driving in your car by listening to the radio? Yeah, because um, you get a better broad view anyway of what the major events did occur t today. Like, um, I remember back a couple months ago when like the R. Kelly situation kicked in. I'm a big fan of him. And um, when that uh, event happened, I mean, you couldn't see it at home because I'm never there. So when they said it on the radio, it was more convenient for me to understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. A lot of us spend more time in our cars anyway, you know, going back and forth to school and things like that. So does that base your opinion on how the actual event's going on? You know, what you hear on the radio, or do you try and focus in on a little bit of everything and then put your own opinion together? I mainly try to focus on, I'm a very opinionated person anyway. And so I just try to really base my opinion on the facts and I don't just take it from one newscast or one radio show. I try to, you know, listen to quite a few of them to before I form my opinion on, you know, the goings on for that day or something, such as like a, a trial or a really big event in America. I try to just listen to all the facts and base my opinion from there. Well, like when they have a big trial going on, do you believe, you know, jurors are not allowed to watch the news or read the newspaper. Do you think that's right or wrong? I think it's right because then they might take a second opinion to what they want to, um, mm -hmm. want to make their decision on. You got, um, looking from different situations anyway because, number one, they listen to what the lawyers are saying, the uh, people testifying in the uh, court case. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you don't want them to watch the news and then they see it from another point of view of what some newcaster is saying. You don't want to hear that. Um, they have to make the decision based on what people are saying in court, not what they're saying on TV. Not just that, but usually uh, print journalists tend to be a little more opinionated as um, instead of the TV journalists because they're just basically writing down what their opinion is and just putting it on paper, you know, unless it's, of course, it's usually true, but it's basically just their opinion. Newscasters usually have to be a little bit more politically correct, so they don't put as much of their opinion in. So I feel like they shouldn't be able to watch TV. They should just basically listen to the facts in court. Um, DeCarlo, do you feel that watching the local or national news is more important to your daily life, or do you watch both? It should be, but like I said, with me not having much time, I can only get so much. Like, I'm usually watching the national news most of the time. I get a little local, local news when I'm looking at newspapers or uh, just something that just pops up. Um, most of the time when I'm watching TV, it's just national news, what went on today mm -hmm. um, in our world. And plus, basically, I also look sometimes at, I hate to say this, MTV, because sometimes they do give like a broadband based on what went on in today, and dealing with not only entertainment and music, but also uh, big events that occurred. Wow. Well, let me ask you this. This is one thing that I've always wondered. Do you think they should put more good into the news or just the bad? You have to have a little bit of both. 
Uh, you can deal with just, I mean, most of the time, bad stuff, and then you look at the little good stuff that some person does. And that's what news, to me, that's what news is all about. They deal with more bad things that happen to a certain person <coughs> than the good things that person do. Um, one, I mean, you can look at like any celebrity, any celebrity at all that can be a charitable person that gives back or has great things going on in their life, but if they do one bad thing, oh, they forget about all that stuff. So, I mean, the bad stuff, in a sense, outweighs the good things that happen, and it should be vice versa. I'm a realist, and I feel like what is going on, I would much rather know that there is some lunatic out there doing all this bad, doing all these bad things, killing up people, raping, and pillaging, I mean, I'd much rather know that than to know someone gave, you know, a million dollars to the, you know, NAACP or something. That's fine. <clears throat> it's great. Yeah, it gives everybody warm fuzzies, you know, but... But you don't feel that's realistic. But I don't feel like that's... Well, it's not that it isn't realistic. I just feel like that local news, to me, more so does the good thing they'll tell about the old person in the community that has helped out and tried to clean up the streets and things like that. But normally, nationally, I feel that we all as a people need to know what's going on in our world, good and bad. I mean, I just really feel like that I think the bad thing should hold precedence because, I mean, I would much rather know right. to, for the safety wise. Well, let me ask you this. Politicians, their children and things, you know, they've had a big stink with like the Bush daughters and things like that. Do you feel that they're, that's their private life and it shouldn't be broadcast, that they should be treated just like any other teenager? Yes. Or do you think that we should know about those things? Practically, me personally, I mean, I'm probably in the same shoes as one of them. I mean, you get in trouble like that, that's your business, it should be. I'm not the president's child, and I'm not, I mean, if I get caught buying liquor or going in a club, they ain't going to put it on the news. But, I mean, yeah, in a sense, you have these two daughters that's uh, going up and doing what they want to do. I mean, yeah, you're going to have anybody on your case, whether it's the National Enquirer or the New York Times. As long as you are somebody, the president's daughter or the president's son or anything like that, you're going to get um, harassed by the media. So, I mean, you can't look beyond that. But you, personally, I mean, they should just leave their personal life alone. Let them live their lives. If they're tr they want to get in trouble, let them get in trouble. Don't broadcast it all over the news and stuff. I think, they, I think mainly they're looking for a sense of normality. And they grow up their whole lives in the public spotlight. You need something that's going to be behind closed doors. Even if they are going out and have fun, they're kids. They're going to do that. We do that. You know, that's just something that... Everybody should be able to do stuff that normal people do, even people in the public eye. You know, heaven forbid I become famous one day. It's going to be things that I want people, the world to know, and it's going to be things that I don't want them to know. And I think that's important for them too. Even though their their father may be the president, they should be able to still be able to live their lives right. and be happy. And then in another sense, you look at uh, before when Bill Clinton was in office, uh, you've seen how... Um, his personal life just went AWOL. I mean, you had, once he became president, it was Paula Jones, it was Monica Lewinsky, whoever, whatever female that came out the picture and said, hey, me and him had an affair. And then it affected his life with Chelsea, it affected his life with Hillary Clinton. But, I mean, before when he was just governor, I mean, did nobody care about being Bill Clinton? Uh -huh. but, well, let me ask you this, though. Do you think the media is responsible for everybody you know when people think of Bill Clinton they're going to think you know the bad thing before mm -hmm. they see all the good he did so do you think the media had the biggest impact on that of course they did they you know I believe that the media as a whole is responsible for really pumping things up things that could be you know swept under the rug things that really don't have that much significance for myself like like Carla was saying the thing about the uh, Monica Lewinsky thing. I felt like that situation should have been between Monica Lewinsky, Bill Clinton, and his wife. It, the whole nation had no business knowing about that whole fiasco. That was sure it was something bad, but he's not perfect. He is a man. He's a man. He's human. And I, I just felt like the media just pumped that up to just the extreme. Tammy. 
Do you feel that it's important for children to watch the news? Because I know when I was in middle school, we had a show called Channel One, which came on in the homeroom every day, and we got to watch the news, and everyone in the class, you know, was really enjoyed that we got to watch it. Do you think children should have a special show? Well, when I was younger, we had, um, we, wa we had Channel One also, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed it quite a bit, but mm -hmm. as I got older, I was in band, so I didn't get to watch it as much. And at home, I recall my little sister watching Neat News W5, which had, I can't recall her name right now, but she was on there and it would tell news events and ask kids what they thought. And I think to an extent it's important, but I still feel like kids should just be kids. They should know things and be able to watch the news with their parents, but I don't think it should just be the main precedent for them. They just want to play. They just want to be kids. And I know I wasn't thinking about world hunger and stuff when I was eight and nine years old. I just wanted to watch cartoons and, you know, Scooby-Doo and stuff. Well, when the September 11th, tri um, the big event happened, uh, Diane Sawyer held a big thing for kids. They came in and they were allowed to ask questions and see how the children actually thought about it. Do you think that was right? I feel like it was good because even if it was, they had parents or something in there, that made them express their true feelings. Um, you don't want them to go bottled up the whole time. I feel like, I feel like she did a great job by doing it. I mean... It was just a big step to just healing the world, seeing what these kids were thinking at the time. Even the kids that didn't even have parents in there living out of state that had questions. That gave them a broad idea of what these kids were feeling. Um, as a person, I mean, even adults needed time just to, you know, relieve stress from that incident because there was a lot of people here at our own school that was affected by what went on on September 11. So it was a real good thing that happened. I feel that it was good also because Something that big, that affects everybody, mm -hmm. young and old alike. And I feel like that usually children are at times afraid to ask adults because they're intimidated. But something like that, they need to know that it's okay to grieve if they were <clears throat> directly affected. They need, to know, they need to know just as much information as we do because that affects our whole world. And that's scary to know that some outside person outside the U.S. would come and attack on us. That's something that most of us, even as adults now, young adults now, has never known. Mm -hmm. Well, the way I feel about it is I like how it was a big new newscaster who did that because children see her every day on the news and to actually know that she they can... They respect her. Right. They do respect what she says, and so when she is answering the questions, it may give them a little bit more security and have that security feeling. Mm -hmm. so. Carlo. Which form of media do you think gives the best sports coverage? Which do you watch the most? Me, personally, I like ESPN and NBC. Uh, during the Olympics, they did a, NBC did a great job covering that whole Olympics thing, even with the little scandals that went on between the, the judging and stuff. But, I mean, in a broadband, you got to look at, they did a great job with the Olympics. Right now, the NBA playoffs is going real strong, and they showed a great, amount of coverage of that but I mean with ESPN it goes in depth you go deeper into the game you go deeper into the stats you go deeper into what that person actually does outside the court also even with the interviews after the game post game reports I mean things like that ESPN does to a sense I like the fact they did a great job about that uh, but I mean if you look at the other stations that does like sports and stuff like Fox Sports I do not like that anymore because they take sports to a whole nother level that they shouldn't even be on. I'm dealing with the fact of it's, yeah, men watching uh, more than 99%, but you got to look at the women that are involved in that, and they use, excuse me for saying this, TNA to get ratings, and I don't think that's fair. I mean, you look at ESPN, they just use their professional level. They're getting good reports out of not only the men, but also the women. So. I mean, it's, I like ESPN and NBC more than anything compared to Fox Sports. Well, tell me, let me ask you this. On the Internet, pretty much every station <coughs> has um, an Internet site. Do you think that they're used as much as the TV, or do you think they're just kind of a waste of time? Well, I feel like any way we can get information about our world and what's going on is effective. And I'm not really sure how much is used, but apparently it must be used quite a bit because it's still going strong. But normally the only time I use internet sources or news, news sources for uh, 
I usually do it for a class if I'm doing research because you're able to go on the internet and get the transcripts of a show even if you watched it and you can do a more in-depth study so I feel like they're they're highly useful because sometimes people don't have time and people who work in offices and they're on the computer constantly that's how they get their information they may not have time to listen to the radio they may not have time to lit, watch TV, but we are an internet-based world and a computer society, so I feel that it must be doing a pretty good job because a lot of people use it. Well, see, even in TV productions, um, do you feel that it's right for them to, you know, some of them will say, well, we got this off of this site or, you know, something like that. Do you think that's right or wrong that we're getting information from newscasters from something that they saw on a web page. Yeah, I feel like that's good because really, you once it's on the internet, you might as well say it's open to the public. I mean, in a, I mean, anybody could be getting information off the internet, but still, you ought to give the person that did actually report the story, give them a little credit for what you uh, what you're saying on TV or what you're saying on the radio. My sense, I mean, I like the fact that I can look at what I just watched from a transcript point of view. That gives you word for word in detail what they were actually talking about, just in case you really didn't understand. But in a sense, um, my point being, with the newscaster just saying, well, we just received this from the internet saying so-and-so did this, I mean, it's good. You have, just in case they forgot they left some, out something during their newscast or during the radio broadcast, it's good to have that information right by your side. Tammy, do you feel that talk shows like Oprah are important for people to watch? I personally don't care for Oprah, <laughs> which is okay. Uh, my mom watches Oprah, my sister watches Oprah. They think it's a wonderful show. I used to watch her. I feel that anything <clears throat> that makes you feel good or takes up your time, as in that for some people, they're religious Oprah watchers. I'm not. And I guess it's okay, but I don't care for her that much because I feel like, now, especially since she has Dr. Phil on there all the time, it's like Oprah and Dr. Phil like all the time. But I think it helps a lot of people in their relationships. I mean, it's helped, you know, broaden people's horizons on different opinions. And I think shows like that, they can actually, it, enlighten a person, I think they're important. I feel that uh, Oprah, to me, I'm disagreeing with her because I do like Oprah. And I get a chance, I'm, I'm a man and I know it's mostly for women, but the things that she do during uh, like, even going back to the big event of last year with September 11th thing, she brought the, she brought, I remember one show she brought the some of the ladies that lost their husbands or brothers and sisters in and let them grieve with it, even with Dr. Phil. I mean, he was there to comfort them, and then let alone not even looking at what she did during that time, she always tries to help find people ways to, you know, get their financial right, uh, dealing with health problems, dealing with relationship problems. But, I mean, I'm a personal fan of Oprah ever since I was little because of my grandmother, and I like the way she really brings, you know, a world out of people that don't even like to open up or she tries to find ways to help people and that's a good thing for a woman like that who's already sitting on millions likes to just sit there and give back. Well let me ask you about this. She has a very realistic and a show that actually can have an impact on somebody's life. What do you feel about these other talk shows that don't? They're rating shows and that's all I can. I mean you look at some of these people, Jenny Jones, Mary, um, anybody else, Ricky Lake especially, they look at the raise. They don't look at the fact they're trying to help people. They're looking trying to make some money. Yeah. And um, they have some of the same shows that come on almost every day, deal with different people. And some of them are stupid, but they don't really help anybody. They don't really, they just for entertainment purposes. And it shouldn't be like that. If you're willing trying to help somebody with their self-confidence or with uh, trying to bring a better life into them. You don't need to be talking about we're having a um, makeover day and at first you look like somebody off of a music video and then you finna turn into a professional woman. Right. It's not like that. It should never be like that. But most of those shows besides Oprah are for just race. They're not just to help people. 
I agree with that in a sense. I don't dislike Oprah the show. I dislike Oprah the person. Her show is okay. I'm just, I used to be a bigger fan of it, but I usually don't have time to watch it. But like he said, Ricky Lake and, you know, Jerry Springer, they're just for ratings and they're just really, I think most people watch them just because they're funny mm -hmm. and to see what kind of scandal is on there, you know, who's my baby's daddy or, you know, geek to chic or whatever. They just do that just because it gets ratings. They make people watch. If you have an, a person that's willing to go on national television and make a fool of themselves, it makes them money, not that person. Mm -hmm. And they willingly want to go on there. I say, hey, go for it. If that's what they want to do, I don't think it helps anybody. But if that's what they want to do, Mark Povich, I kind of like him. He's, he's a little, he has some trashy shows, but not that much and not that often. He helps kids a lot and helps parents with, the, usually, usually a lot of the shows I've seen about on his show are usually dealing with kids with special needs and helping their parents and putting them through programs and people who have weight problems. So I kind of like him. To me, he's kind of in the same genre with Oprah because he's not as trashy as like Ricky. Well, that, and I've noticed, even though if he does one of the shows, like The Baby's Daddy, I, they all seem to do that. Or but he kind of does it in a more respectful way and yeah. actually tries to help them, not yeah. try and make them look stupid and trashy. So. Carla, do you feel that music television stations do a good job of reporting news coverage? That's half and half. I do believe they do it sometimes, but depending on what the situation is, it's like they get it's almost like they get bring Chris Rock into the table to do a news news telecast <laughs> and Chris Rock is a comedian and he sometimes loses his mind anyway. Um in a sense, yes, when you're dealing with people that has been working. For instance, MTV. They have Serena Achua, mm -hmm. Kurt Loder. Those people are good, but when you bring DJs in there that yeah. we hear on a radio station that really have a sense for, you know, bringing out the music and not bringing in the news, then it makes the news sound like it's funny. Um, one, only one, only few I've seen is when like a musician or artist dies and they're more real serious and, and things. But when they're bringing on news like happening like somebody, like an incident a while back with uh, rapper Snoop Dogg having a murder case, they was using it as a joke. And they're trying to make, they, at first MTV was trying to trash hip hop in this community by using that as one of his sense to show that, hey, these guys are living their life, let's just trash them all in sense. And then now when they seen uh, that stuff like rock Hip hop is on the rise. Now they want to use it again. They want to just take it to a whole nother level and bring like shows back into the picture. But when it comes to news, I don't feel like they should um, bring like artists in to do that news telecast or bring in comedians. Use people that has a sense, not have just a sensibility. Okay, we know media is everywhere. You know, it's in our day to day life. Is it? Do you believe that it has a, been a big impact on? not only your personal life, but you know, the society as a whole on the way we think about things. You know, you talked about the crime and things like that. Does that just make everybody scared or does it just bring you to the realization of, hey, it's there? It brings me to the realization of life because you uh, think about it. I mean, crime can happen right outside this door mm -hmm. and people wouldn't know about it. But you take it to New York City or Chicago or Little Rock even, and there's situations going on. Um, they don't, it's like a cover up. At first, didn't nobody know that Little Rock was one of the biggest crime cities in America. But it took a HBO special to show them that, hey, Little Rock got problems just like Los Angeles and New York do. So, I mean, it brings everybody into a reality with the news broadcast, whether it's good or bad. Um, I like the fact that, I mean, it doesn't scare me, but it makes you wake up and say, hey, you need to be careful out in these streets or you need to be careful wherever you go. I just feel like, to me, it makes me, like you said, it brings me to a, a realization because in my mind, I look back to when I was a child and I think to myself, we would go and never have to worry about getting beat up on the way to school or bullies or 
the worst problem we had was worried about if the guy at school we liked was going to like us or if we had enough money to get a popsicle at lunch or something. But to think that if somebody at school, just because you made fun of them, to blow up their school, that just is beyond me. To see what our world is coming to now, it just, it is all kind of scary. Well, I want to thank both of y'all for being here with us today. Thank We've you. discussed many aspects of the media. Um, thank you very much for listening in today. The SAU Report is a production of broadcast journalism students in the Department of Theater and Mass Communication at Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia.